Matt, here we are one more time doing our Timber Tech decking series. Yep. Yeah, love it. Part of what, uh, as we talked about in the intro, we really wanted to focus on brand specific Timber Tech stuff and then separate the lines too and do individual episodes on this product that customer chose. So in this episode, we're focusing on the advanced PVC product. And one, I remember a few years ago when I started looking into this, uh, just the expansion and contraction thing, it's real. But could you talk about why they recommend to ideally install the product when the temperature's cool? Sure, yeah, that's actually one of the biggest things we talk about. Uh, the makeup of this board is, as I mentioned earlier in the segment, was that it's cellular, so cellular PVC. And if you think of those cells as balloons, when the when the balloons are cold, the air uh, will cause the balloon to contract and the, the balloon will be small. So the bubbles inside of this are actually contracting. The whole board is contracting. And when it heats up, those bubbles expand and that is expansion of the board. So um, we prefer it to be at a cooler temperature uh, just because of the, the core of the board when it when it when it tries to expand, it's only gonna expand until it meets resistance. So it doesn't have enough strength inherently to push and push and cause your, your boards to buckle and okay. pop out. So, um, so we would prefer that the board be installed cold and that way when it does heat up, if it does expand, it's gonna expand it's only as far as it can go and, uh, and, then it, and then it's gonna be limited at that point. Okay. I think I read somewhere also that you recommend if you're measuring out, you're making a precision cut mm -hmm. that you install the board as quickly as you can after making the cut. Yeah, and the same goes right along with that. If the if you take the board, you've kept it cool, you've done a good job keeping it shaded or in the, in the garage or something, but you've then taken it out to your saw and it's sitting in the sun while you're measuring your cuts and then it goes and sits on the deck for a few more minutes. In, in 15, 20 minutes, that board can heat up basically to its maximum temperature and those bubbles have now expanded. And now the board, even though you've cut it perfectly, it's gonna be at its expanded state internally. So now when the sun goes down and it cools it down outside, inherently that board is gonna to wanna to pull back. So gotcha. if we start off with a cool board to begin with, it's already at the shorter state okay. and we're less likely to see that contraction. So you worked hard all day. So I'm gonna make one more cut and I'll install it tomorrow. Right. Come back on the job at 8 a.m. and. Put it up, go, hmm, this, I thought Quarter it would fit sure. better. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Um, best practices as far as spacing. Could you talk about recommended spacing between between boards? Sure. Uh, specifically for PVC, we recommend uh, an eighth inch gap. And the gap between the boards is really just for drainage of the deck and for proper airflow for your framing. So it's one of the, the key things that as a good building practice, you definitely need to have airflow for your framing. If you're using wood framing, uh, just allowing that airflow to keep the moisture from, from getting trapped in there, yeah. which was gonna cause rot and, and mold and mildew to, to build up faster. Yeah. So the, the spacing between PVC boards is really more, the sideways, side to side, is really more about the airflow and drainage than it is about the performance of the product. Not getting a lot of movement that way. Correct, it's yeah. all in the length of the Okay, but joints, and maybe custom miter joints. Sure, so Different yeah, angle. If we're talking butt joints, we're talking about bringing the boards together at the ends. And uh, we would, with PVC, we would always say to start tight. So no matter what your temperature is outside, if it's a warm day or a cold day, you always wanna start tight with it. Because again, if, it's, uh, if it starts out tight, we're, we're less concerned with that board trying to expand okay. because it's not it's gonna stop once it meets resistance. So okay. we're more concerned with it pulling back. And if you start with a gap and you get a bigger gap, it's just gonna be okay. that unsightly. And that doesn't matter if it's board to board or a board butting into a railing post. Picture frame, tight, you know, tight house, is. anything, yeah, you're gonna wanna be tight. Okay. Um, hey, you can throw one more question in for you. I want to say talking to a different brand, I thought their recommendation these days is to do a clean cut on the boards, mm, yes. not just use the factory ends. Do you consider that a best practice for TimberTech as well? Definitely. That's, uh, I think most manufacturers would, would recommend that. We, we try, uh, we have very tight tolerances for the product and we will typically make the board and cut the board slightly oversized. So you may buy a 20 foot board when it comes to it, maybe 20 and a quarter. 
And we do that specifically so that you can square up your ends just in case there is any fluctuation in our saw. You, may, you wanna make sure that we've got a little extra material there. You can use a full length board and, and cut it down and make it square on the ends. Okay. Could you talk about ways, with PVC, I know you've got a little bit more options because of how, you, how close you can fasten to the end or edge of a board, mm -hmm. but ways people are trying in design, eliminating butt joints. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, uh, doing uh, divider boards, for example. Uh, if you have a long run and you're bringing two 20 footers together end to end, instead of actually putting those boards together where they both could contract and leave you a gap that's twice as big. If you run a divider board, now one board is on either side and you have basically half the gapping. Uh, picture framing is also common practice now. So a picture frame will not only aesthetically look great, but it will also allow you to shrink the infield of the deck. So if you have a 22 foot deck, for example, you could use a picture frame or a double or a triple picture frame mm -hmm. to shrink the inside of the deck and now use a full length board instead of having seams in it. Yeah, yeah, that gives you a lot of options. And design wise, it looks yeah. great. And it does take a little bit of coaching up front. Say, okay, you know, you're gonna have these divider boards, all right, between those two joists, you put in some ladder blocking. Right. But, because <laughs> we've done blog articles and so forth and help build different decks. And that whole idea of cutting your board at the chop saw and trying to get it right and then trying to have it be perfect on the deck and you do that 24 times, mm -hmm. it just doesn't look right. Yeah. So in some of these methods now, you know, you can let it run kind of wild into that joist bay, let it run wild to the edge of the deck and then just make that There's one clean saw. cut. It's yeah. gotta be, you gotta do it in the right place, but it just looks so much better. Yes. Yeah, and it saves a ton of ton of time and motion, I guess, to mm -hmm. run around the job site. Uh, fastening options with PVC, can you talk about that? Sure, um, we've always said the best way to install this board, the PVC product, is top-down fastening. So mm -hmm. using two fasteners, whether it be uh, color match screws or there's the Cortex plug system, which allows you to drive a fastener that is countersunk and then put a plug made of the same material into that hole to virtually cover the screw and make the, the fastener disappear. But uh, the big focus with PVC is we wanna pin that board down to the framing. So by driving a fastener directly through the board into the framing, we're gonna pin it and hold it tight. We can use clip systems, so we do make our own, our own clip system. And you can use clip, clip systems with the PVC product. We make a grooved board. Uh, but clip systems in general were designed to allow for expansion and contraction. They were really designed for composite decking where we want to allow for that movement. And so if you use clips with PVC, there's a good chance that you could see that expansion and contraction and, and gapping occurring at the butt joint. Okay. So you want to be ready for that. One common practice we've seen in the field is people using our clip, and then they will add a fastener to the end of the board to try and pin the end to hold it tight. Now, it's a good, great thought, but we would, if you're going to do that, what we'd recommend is to go back a couple of joists, so okay. do the end, and then a couple of joists back, and that also add your, your top-down fastening, your cortex. Okay. Pin down the end of the board, and then in the center of the board, you can still have expansion and contraction. It'll be internal, you won't see it. Okay. You wanna pin the end and hold that tight so you don't see the movement at the joists. Okay, and picking up a couple joists from the end to not just isolate that stress on the last joist. Exactly. Where you might snap screw, or right, exactly. worst case scenario, okay. Uh, I think the one thing for the audience and me too, going back a ways, was just how different the screw placement is from a composite mm -hmm. product to the PVC. So maybe share what people can get away with, even though it might not seem right. right. Can I really do that? That is one that raise eyes, it raises eyebrows when we talk about it. The fact that you can, not only can you be close to the edge of the PVC board or the end of the board, we, would, we actually request that you get those fasteners as close to the end as possible. So we say a half inch or closer to the end of the board. <clears throat> the idea is that the unfastened part of the board, so if I were to pull my screws way back, that unfastened material is still allowed to expand and contract. Mm -hmm. And I could still see some gapping occur, but if I pull those screws all the way out to the end, I've now pinned down that portion of the board and I've really limited how much movement I can get. Okay. so unlike other products out there, or especially the earlier genera, just you're not worried about it chunking out or it just performs differently. So again, the goes back to the makeup of the board, cellular PVC at the core. Okay. 
when you're driving that screw through it, those cells, those bubbles can actually collapse upon themselves and create a path for the screw to go through. Yeah. So we don't build up the pressure. So there's no pressure that causes the split at the end of the board. Okay, okay. Uh, to wrap up this episode, I thought we could pick up again on uh, wild wildfires are a big deal. Yep. So the, what we're hearing a big term, the WUI codes, the wildland urban interface, I know it's still uh, kind of in play as to how it how it ultimately plays out and impacts the greater Seattle area, but I think we both realize that's going to be a thing. Yes. And once you stop for a minute and th drive through a neighborhood and go, okay, I can see why that's a thing, right? Things grow yeah. <laughs> and it gets crazy, but P your PVC boards, I think they've got a leg up on some of these codes that they're talking about. They do. So inherently, uh, this board, to burn it, you actually need to hold a flame to it meaning it's self-extinguishing. If, if you have a flame on the product, it will burn. You remove the flame, remove the, the source of the flame, and the fire will actually go out from this board. It doesn't continue to burn. So uh, we do carry, in two of the PVC collections, we carry a Class A flame spread rating. We also carry an ignition resistance rating. Mm -hmm. And throughout the entire PVC collection, we have a WUI, we have the WUI certification. So. Um, the, we're see, we are definitely seeing this growing more and more throughout the United States. It's not just a West Coast thing. It's not just okay. a you know, Western United States thing. We're seeing wildfires in the Carolinas and Tennessee and in New York. So yeah. uh, this is really being driven a lot by insurance. And uh, so we're seeing this kind of spread across the country. So it's not really just in the past years, we've seen this in the, in the Western markets. This is something we're gonna have to deal with across the country. Yeah. And um, so we do have we do have products that will allow you to have more fire resistance with them versus uh, some of the other products out there. Okay, awesome. Timber Tech Advanced PVC Decking. You gave us a lot of good things to pay attention to. So thank you. Another good episode. Yeah, appreciate that.